B-Door Toccata, strains of which open today's hour-long music from Waller Hall Easter special, probably shares top billing with Handel's Hallelujah Chorus as among the most iconic, recognizable pieces associated with this joyful day. This is your host, Charles Oligar, extending heartiest Easter greetings here on WBTN AM 1370, your live and local, community-supported, nonprofit radio station, as I welcome you to a show that will include not only full-length renditions of the Vidor Toccata and Hallelujah Chorus, but also several other musical expressions of the immense joy of the occasion, which can be both extrovertedly boisterous and intimately quiet. Without further ado, we launch into the Vidor Toccata, the closing movement of the Fifth Organ Symphony, written nearly a century and a half ago by the French Romantic composer Charles-Marie Vidor, a piece resounding in numerous churches throughout the world this very day as the quintessential Easter postlude. Justin Foster recorded this iconic piece only a couple weeks ago on First Reformed Church's 132-rank four-manual organ built recently by the Allen Company of Pennsylvania, incorporating both pipes and cutting-edge digital technology.
From the joyous scintillations of the Vidor Toccata in F, we turn to the stirring anthem Spring Bursts Today by Albany-based Alfred Fedak, an extensively published composer of national prominence who is celebrating his 25th anniversary as organist and music director of Albany's Westminster Presbyterian Church. We'll hear it performed by the Sanctuary Choir of First Reformed Church, Scotia, Rebecca Shepherd directing with Justin Foster at the organ. We broadcast Mr. Fedak's anthem courtesy of Morningstar Music Publishers. Following these messages, this hour-long music at Waller Hall returns, joyfully celebrating Easter with organ and voices. Welcome back to Music from Waller Hall's hour-long Easter special here on WBTN, which at this point finds us at the First Reformed Church of Scotia, New York, across the Mohawk River from Schenectady with guest musicians, organist Justin Foster and the church's choir, under the direction of Rebecca Shepherd. As one would expect, much of Easter music is mighty, seeking to take up where words leave off in striving to convey the triumph of resurrection, the victory of light over darkness, new life arising from what has been dead. But there is also a facet of the Easter experience that inhabits a more quiet space, 
such as the scene in the garden by the tomb in which Jesus was lain, as mourners arrived early Easter morning to anoint the Lord's body prior to encountering the empty tomb and the angel's announcement of Jesus' resurrection. We read in the Gospel according to St. Mark, And when the Sabbath day was past, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome did procure ointments and sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And early in the morn the next day after the Sabbath day came they unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone that standeth at the door of the sepulchre? Such is the habitat of a piece written by Vidor's contemporary, Louis Vierne, appearing in a collection published in 1927. We again hear Justin Foster at the magnificent Allen organ of First Reformed Church, an instrument wonderfully suited to a wide spectrum of organ music covering many centuries, including that written for the remarkable symphonic organs that Vidor and Vierne knew in Paris, cutting-edge instruments in their own day, as is the 2014 Allen organ on which Mr. Foster is performing. As introverted as is the Vierne piece we have just encountered, the energy of resurrected life is not to be contained for long, as witnessed by a piece written by the recently deceased American composer Joseph Wilcox Jenkins, who for several decades taught composition at Duquesne University, and whose published works number in excess of 200. 
Recorded by Justin Foster at First Reformed Church of Scotia toward the end of last month, the work is entitled Deo Gracias, Thanks Be to God. Toward its beginning, the deep rumbling of the lowest organ pipes might bring to mind the rolling away of the large stone blocking the entrance to Jesus' tomb. The relating fanfares played on this organ several trumpet stops suggest the angel announcing, He is risen. The organ to which I refer, built for First Reformed Church by the Allen Organ Company of Pennsylvania, weds the very latest achievements in digitally generated sound with traditional pipes to achieve a musical result that, I submit, is fully the equal of even the finest all-pipe instruments. Christian Church holds Easter as its principal feast, the Day of Days. From well over a thousand years ago comes the jubilant 8th century plain song acclamation for Easter Day, Christus vincit, Christus regnat, Christus imperat. We hear the opening portion of what is a lengthy litany when fully rendered, recorded by a chant scola I assembled at St. James Episcopal Church in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. The translation reads, Christ triumphs, Christ reigns, Christ our King of kings. Christ Jesus, hear us. Vouchsafe unto the church of God thy perpetual safety and care. O thou Redeemer, O thou Savior, grant unto thy church succor and strength. Christus 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 Far more succinct, 
yet every bit as exuberant, is Bach's organ setting of the great Lutheran Easter chorale, Christ Lay in the Bonds of Death, which I recorded this past summer on Waller Hall's neo-baroque pipe organ. Following a station break, Music at Waller Hall returns for the final segment of this special Easter edition, replete with a hallelujah chorus and more. As we enter the final segment of today's show, it is perhaps gratuitous to note the extent to which the exclamation hallelujah infuses the celebration of Easter. Take, for example, a hymn sung throughout Christendom on this day of resurrection, here sung by our guest choir, that of First Reformed Church of Scotia, New York. Pursuing this theme, we turn to what is indisputably the most famous setting of the word hallelujah, as found in George Frederick Handel's transcendent oratorio, Messiah. Donning a musical hat I have not worn for a number of years now, I am conducting this performance, which was recorded live in 1993 during what I call my English phase, manifested in a large effort made in Grand Rapids, Michigan, to replicate the glories of English cathedral music via a choir of men and boys I formed and trained for that rather ambitious purpose. Our performance was taking place the Sunday before Easter, which turned out to be a dark and dreary March day. But no sooner did the Hallelujah Chorus begin than the sun unexpectedly appeared, brilliantly illuminating the choir and orchestra. Immediately following the Hallelujah Chorus, I am placing from the same performance the finale of this ineffably great oratorio, a glorious fugue on the word Amen, my ad hoc if not arbitrary juxtaposition intended as somewhat of a benediction upon the special Easter edition of music from Waller Hall. <laughs>